Flames from the Bear Fire remain all along Highway 162 near Lake Oroville. Heavy smoke means visibility is poor. Wednesday night's hot spots no longer threaten many portions north of the lake. The damage here has already been done. The community of Berry Creek hit hard. Homes like this one have been destroyed. Every year it seems to get worse and worse. While well, this man decided to stay. It's, it's no worse to like you could put together to describe what I'm feeling right now. Berry Creek resident Omar Corwin was convinced to evacuate at the last moment. His home burned after he left. It was because of my friend that persuaded me, man. Like his love, like, come on, dude, you can't die. You got responsibility. You got people that love you. Many escaped the flames, some could not. The Butte County Sheriff's Department saying the bear fire has taken three lives while others remain missing. Sheriff Corey Hone addressing the media just short of two years after the campfire became the deadliest fire in state history. The city of Paradise and neighboring communities also issued evacuation notices for the bear fire. Uh, our community is unfortunately uh, becoming accustomed to this. Uh, I certainly hoped after the campfire that I wouldn't be back up here uh, talking with you about uh, a wildland fire of this magnitude. Yeah, absolutely devastating out there in California right now. We have Olivia De Janeiro joining us. Olivia, glad to have you here on Newsfeed Now. Wow, just seeing where you're at. Tell us where you are and what you're seeing around you. Good morning, Suzanne. So you mentioned San Francisco looked like a science fiction movie out here just north of uh, Lake Oroville. It looks more like the apocalypse, honestly. All of that smoke, well, this is partly where it's coming from. And the visibility out here, uh, we can't see much past this tree line. We have no idea what's behind this line of trees that we're standing right up in front of. That's how thick the smoke is this morning. And that gives you an idea of the conditions that firefighters are dealing with as they're trying to get containment on this fire. We're not too far from that Berry Creek area you just mm -hmm. saw in Eric's story. We're not far from that area at all. And uh, we're seeing a lot of those burned homes and destroyed properties from just the roadway, just what we can see through the smoke. Uh, it's hard to tell how many homes have been burned because the smoke is so thick, we just really can't see the scope of the destruction. I was going to say, is that face mask helping at all? I mean, my dad, he I'm from California. He lives about two hours away from the, those fires. And he can smell the, the smoke in his house right now. It's that bad. You know, it's all over California. People are experiencing that. In fact, the air quality, because of course we're based out of Sacramento, uh, so we live about two hours away from here. The air quality index wasn't showing just how bad the smoke was because ash in Sacramento is literally raining from the sky and the particles are too large for the air quality uh, sensors to pick up how much smoke and ash is in the air. So it's not just here, but really in this area, uh, you know, my photographer and I are driving two separate separate cars to distance ourselves because of the pandemic and I can't be more than 50 feet behind him without losing sight of his vehicle in the smoke. That's how thick it is here. Wow, that really does bring us perspective. Olivia, I really want to talk about electricity right now. Um, are you hearing about any issues with power outages going out at this time? You know, we've seen a lot of downed power lines around here, so it's very likely that the power has been cut off to most of this area. Uh, yesterday, we were covering another nearby fire, and as you probably know, PG&E uh, here in the West has shut off a lot of power in these communities over the past couple days, these more rural communities, because of high winds and strong uh, fire danger over the past couple days. So we were actually covering a different fire not too far from here yesterday, and the power was already out before that fire. Fire sparked. These fires, this north complex, uh, were sparked by lightning more than three weeks ago on August 17th. So it's been mm -hmm. a slow burn out here, uh, and it's burned more than 250,000 acres at this point with just 24% containment. So as far as power goes, we're really not seeing many people out here at all. Everyone who lives in this area is long gone by now. What about generators? Uh, do you think people are more prepared this time around? We saw the impact um, from last year's wildfires and generators was the biggest thing because the power was going out, PG&E pulling the plugs as well. So are we seeing people rush to the stores at this time or do you think people are more prepared? 
You know, I know last year when PG&E was shutting off the power, generators were flying off the shelves. Stores could not keep them in stock. Out here, like I said, no one is out here. I don't think people are even trying to necessarily keep the power on in their houses. But over the past couple days, we've also been covering those power shutoffs by PG&E. And we know other rural areas that have businesses that are trying to stay open, that aren't threatened by wildfire, are using backup generators that they most likely purchased in years past because of similar situations. All right, Olivia, we appreciate your time. We know you got to go. Stay safe out there, and we appreciate your coverage out in California.